I truly believe that one of the toughest balancing acts you can be forced to kind of navigate in professional wrestling is when you're an executive or a decision maker, a power broker in a professional wrestling company, but also an active in-ring talent. Navigating between what's best for you and what's best for business can certainly be a tough balancing act. And one of the things that can be really tough about that is sometimes you'll have those people that will trust themselves too much and bring people in just to put them over as kind of like an ego trip. See, the Memphis Mint Card PC Crap founder, Jeff fucking Jarrett. But then you could also have situations where because somebody is in charge or relatively in charge or a vice president in a company has say so on the booking committee and so forth, they could sometimes be conscientious to a fault of how it's going to be perceived if they're always booked in a certain spot and they always go over and they always win, they're always putting the best light in the best situations. And as a result, you could see people potentially not making the best decision for business out of that fear. It's a little bit of that damned if you do, damned if you don't type of thing. Now, in full disclosure, I am totally not surprised that Cody Rhodes, one of the executive vice presidents of All Elite Wrestling, is putting himself in a world title match against Chris Jericho November 9th at that full gear pay-per-view. Color me not surprised at all. And yes, I have a problem with it. However, the problem with it might not be what you think it might be for me. Because let's, let's have a little truth talk here for a minute. When you look at a company like All Elite Wrestling right now, one of the gaping holes, issues that they have currently is a lack of a clearly established, well-developed main event scene. You can make the argument that some of that is going to be solved as you go through time through television on a weekly basis. Maybe. But they're lacking for big names at the top. They're lacking for clearly established, recognizable names that people will know and people rec recognize and people potentially can gravitate to. That's why it made so much sense to put the belt for the first time on somebody and have it be on Chris Jericho because he's the most recognizable guy in that damn company outside of maybe the broadcaster Jim Ross, good old JR. Those are easily your two most recognizable names in the company. JR is not an active wrestler. Chris Jericho is. You have to put the damn strap on him. And when you look at over the past few days what had happened with a little bit of the bubbly and all the talk about a little bit of the bubbly. I mean, Chris Jericho took that something like that and it got over big time. The amount of exposure that AEW got out of people seeing these little clips of Jericho saying, a little bit of the bubble makes it all worthwhile. But you run into the problem of established, believable challengers for him as the current world champion. And when you look at this roster, and when you look from a mainstream across the United States standpoint, who are the most recognizable names that Jericho could wrestle against? Certainly isn't going to be Hangman Page. You know, the next closest guy, logically, is probably going to be a John Moxley, Dean Ambrose, due to his time in WWE, certainly. But he wasn't even at the All Out show due to the staph infection that he had, so you still have some unfinished business with him and Kenny Omega. Fine, you could do that at the next show if you want, or do it on TV or whenever the heck they're going to do it. That makes sense. The logical person potentially would have been Moxley. Realistically, the next most logical person is not a Kenny Omega. It is Cody Rhodes, due to his family name and his years spent on WWE television between Raw and SmackDown. He is one of their most recognizable faces, one of their most recognizable names. I don't have to like the son of a gun. I don't have to respect the son of a gun to acknowledge and accept that. And looking at this again from a purely business standpoint, you can't have Chris Jericho go out there 
and be jobbing out as the world champion to the AEW equivalents, let's say, of freaking Fandango. That does nothing to elevate that person, and it only diminishes the first world champion, the legend that is Chris Jericho. That makes no sense. So you have to have somebody that is somewhat established, somewhat recognizable, somewhat believable. In comes Cody Rhodes. So even if you want to say, hey, him putting himself in this spot is Mark type of Jeff Jarrett bullshit, I get it. I don't agree with that fully. That might be a motivating factor, in part. I can't really say that. But the reality is, is it makes sense from a business standpoint. When you look at that roster and who you could potentially throw up against Jericho right now as a credible, believable world champion challenger, you got Moxley, you got Cody Rhodes, and then maybe Kenny Omega. Those would be the three most likely to fill into that role. He already kind of aired a little bit by putting Hangman Page into that spot that he wasn't quite ready for, frankly. Now here's a chance to kind of get it right. Well, it makes sense, especially if you look at the potential there of Cody and his association with MJF and potentially having MJF, you think at a match like that, costing him the title that could launch him and Cody off into their own program that could carry on for TV for a couple of months and culminated a big show. Okay, cool. Like that, that really makes sense. Like that's not bad business. And especially if you're talking about going on TV and hyping up to a pay-per-view match. And especially if you're going to be expecting people to pay pay-per-view prices, you better give them some recognizable names. And since you don't have a ton of star power at this point in all elite wrestling, you don't have a ton of recognizable names. You better maximize and utilize the ones that you have to get you by for the time being. And Cody is one of those guys. So, so my problem is not him having a world title match at that full gear pay-per-view. My problem is really announcing it ahead of time at the beginning of September when you're still a month away from your television debut. Why would you do that? Because you're fearful that you haven't sold out that pay-per-view show in November already? Calm down, dudes. You still got two months to do so. I'm pretty sure you're going to get to it or close to it, and that's okay. Especially for a company that has so little established history. If you're making this type of move because you're saying, hey, we want to go ahead and let the people know what they can expect to see, that's a panic move, and you shouldn't be in the business of making panic moves at this point. If you don't sell out the show within 30 minutes of the tickets being available, that's okay. That's not realistic, and that was not a maintainable pace for you long term. It just wasn't. My problem with this comes in is that you're spoiling this two months out, and you're undercutting your television, which hasn't even started yet. And don't give me any crap about what they maybe have done on YouTube or anything like this. No, that's stupid. That's crap. How many people actually watch those being the elite YouTube shows, like realistically? And especially in terms of American fans that would tune into TNT starting October 2nd and watch the two-hour show on Wednesday night every week. I mean, let's get real here. What I don't understand is the whole rush to have to throw this out there that two months ahead of time you're going to build to this match. And correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't Jericho designed to have a world title defense on like the second or third episode? Either A, if that happens to be against Cody Rhodes, then you're kind of spoiling the finish of that match there. Or B, it's not against Cody Rhodes, and then for, therefore you're still kind of spoiling the finish of that match because you've already started building up and teasing for weeks Cody Rhodes challenging Chris Jericho for the AEW World Championship. Like, that's a WWE dumb dick move. Don't do that. Be better than that. And even WWE, when you use a recent comparison here, where they're talking about Bray Wyatt facing somebody at the next pay-per-view for the title in a Hell in a Cell, the difference being is he's not spoiling who the winner is. It's either Seth Rollins or Braun Strowman, and they're using their television to drive that. AEW is just releasing this via social media and undercutting their television. Like, why would it matter what you do with Cody Rhodes the next few weeks when you already know he's getting a world title shot? Why would it matter what you do with Chris Jericho the next few weeks when you already know he's defending his world title on November 9th at full gear? 
There was absolutely no reason to spoil this now. Don't undercut your damn television to save your own face here. It makes no damn sense, kind of like what I just said. Build up to this. Tease it a little bit. Plant that seed on the first show. And then over the next week or two, grow that seed a little bit and let it flower and sprout out. And then as you get to middle, late October, you could announce that this is going to be your world title match. And now you've actually got a little bit of a story and background that has built up to it. You're not trying to then create a story just to fill in the gaps that you've already announced the match. Now, I know the AEW sheep are going to sit there and get all butthurt about this, which is no surprise there. But this is valid. This is silly. There was just no need to do it. There's just no need to do it. This is not good wrestling business to do something like that. Sure, announce that Chris Jericho is going to defend the title there if you want. Okay, I'll even go with that. Or just announce that Chris Jericho is going to be on the show. That Kenny Omega versus John Moxley might happen on that show. Or that Kenny Omega and John Moxley might appear on the show. That Cody Rhodes and the Bucks are going to appear on the show. Luchasaurus is going to appear on the show. Advertise the talent. Try to get the talent over. That's okay. There is nothing wrong with that. You can sit there and say that these guys are going to be featured on the show without giving up way too much about how they're going to be featured on the show and allow your television for that first four, five, six weeks to build up to that pay-per-view. That's how this should work. Not sitting there and undercutting your damn TV by announcing your world title matches two plus damn months ahead of time. That just makes no sense. You know, while you're in an experimental type of stage here at the beginning, at the foundation of your company, and you're going to make mistakes, and that's natural, you don't want to make too many unnecessary mistakes. And to me, this just feels like an unnecessary mistake. And maybe right now, in the grand scheme of things, it feels like there's it's not a big deal. And in reality, it probably isn't in part because AEW's television show hasn't even started yet. But if you start getting carried away with doing this, and announcing your big featured matches before they've even really been built up to on television, all you're doing is undercutting your television and giving people more reasons to not tune into your television. Again, if you don't want to be WWE, don't use WWE tactics to build up to your bigger shows. I have no issue with Cody Rhodes wrestling Chris Jericho for the world title on November 9th. If I was in a position of power within that company, that might be the world title match that I would go to. Or if it wasn't at this pay-per-view, it very well might be the next one. Because from a business standpoint, again, it makes sense. And I don't care about the emotions and the feelings and so on and so forth and bad will. It's about business first and foremost, which is exactly why I'm calling this out to be a bad move, bad decision making from a business standpoint. We want to see this company succeed, then they should do things that put them in a position to succeed spoiling title matches months ahead of time and undercutting the television is not a good way to do so, in my opinion.